Hi, today we'll be looking at mercury switches and whether we can use them to detect Apogee to tell us when to deploy our parachutes. Uh, we don't have the convenience of the pyro guys of a delay charge and so we have to find different ways of uh, detecting when we um, want to deploy the parachute. So mercury switches are for today. So basically what I've done here is mounted a mercury switch as a trigger on a timer. So when the rocket tips over at Apogee, it should open the parachute. So let's see if it works. Alarm it. Now the rocket's ready to take off. It takes off and it's flying up, flying up. And the rocket tips over and the parachute comes out. Now that, that seems to work well on the ground. Unfortunately, mercury switches don't work that way in real life. So let's have a look how they actually work. What we've done here is set up an experiment. We mounted three mercury switches on a PCB and connected each to an LED so that we can see when they activate. We then placed the board in the micro lab payload bay. The micro lab has a small video camera and lens that can record the mercury switches in flight. There is also a barometric altimeter that records the entire flight. A small light source provides enough light for the experiment. Here it is mounted in the payload bay. The micro lab is mounted on top of a 9.8 litre rocket and on top of that is the recovery system. The recovery system uses an electronic timer which is configured to open the parachute a little past Apogee so that we can see what happens to the payload during Apogee. So let's have a look at the first flight. Three, two, one, go! Okay, so let's have a look at that in slow motion. Now watch as the rocket accelerates past 150 feet, uh, just past maximum velocity, switch number 3 activates. This happens because air drag on the rocket causes it to undergo negative acceleration. There is no air drag on the mercury beam and so its inertia carries it forward. Now the parachute gets ejected, it starts increasing drag on the rocket, which causes switch number two to activate. Drag is increasing until the parachute fully opens, which causes switch number one to activate. So let's have a look at flight number two. Three. Two, one, it's an go! And here it is in slow motion. So watch again as the rocket accelerates just past 150 feet. Switch number three activates again. We approach Apogee. And the parachute is ejected. And it takes a couple of seconds before the parachute actually opens. So coming down, switch 1 and 2 still haven't activated and parachute opens and 1 and 2 have now activated as well. So there you have it. You can't reliably use mercury switches to detect Apogee. You can however use them to detect burnout, uh, providing the rocket has enough deceleration and also that the switch is mounted around the right way.